Hello students, Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. Hope you guys are having a good evening. Hope you guys can see my screen as we're going to be working on lesson 13 out of the Violin Tutor Pro Series 2 book. This is a, uh, designated for students, especially that have been playing between 3 and 12 months. So if you guys are just starting to get into the violin, maybe you're having some, uh, some struggles, but uh, you're excited and um, looking to learn some new stuff. So uh, the thing that I'm going to be first discussing today is just some practice tips. Hopefully give you guys some encouragement as uh, summertime as it is right now can sometimes be difficult to really find motivation to practice. Uh, typically in the summer, it's really nice outside and it's easy to uh, not want to um, come inside and, and play your violin. The ultimate solution is just to play your violin outside on the beach or on the pier. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. I do have some students that do that, <laughs> um, go around and um, go from place to place and play their violin. So that's always uh, an option. But for those of you guys that maybe have been struggling to really find motivation in practicing, um, one thing that I highly recommend to you guys is to not let yourself get overwhelmed with the whole idea of practice. I think what mostly happens is students assign a certain amount of time that they um, would consider a practice session. That might be 60 minutes, that might be 30 minutes. And if they don't have that time at that very second, it can seem overwhelming to just, uh, you know, do even that amount of time. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but, you know, with life that comes in the way, it's really easy to, to not have the um, motivation all the time to do that. So my suggestion for you guys is to try to think less of your practice sessions. Try to set yourself some really small goals, and uh, if you're able to accomplish that, say, once or even twice a day, that's ideal. So, uh, for example, if um, try to consider, you know, five minutes a, a practice session or even, you know, 15 minutes. I think if you guys do that, you, you'll, you'll find yourself, um, you know, it'd be easier to get into a routine because, you know, if you have these really long thoughts of practice sessions, you can do it maybe once in a while, but you're eventually going to get overwhelmed and maybe then get out of routine and then ultimately um, lose progress. So, the, you know, it's really effective just to practice, say, you know, five, six times a week for 15 minutes or five minutes. And during the key is during those times to really focus on what you're doing and how you're practicing. I actually have a really good resource that's on my website, violentutorpro.com. If you guys click on the blog, there's a blog article that's, I think, probably six or seven from the top at this point. But maybe um, if you guys are watching this down the road, it might be kind of uh, embedded to have to find it. But basically, it's called the practice quiz, music practice quiz. And if you guys take it, it will really show you if you're actually practicing properly. I find quite often that students just pick up their violins and they don't really do exactly what they're supposed to do when they're uh, practicing the violin. So really don't think so much about the amount of time that you're putting in. Think more about the quality. So, you know, most people have five minutes here, five minutes there. Um, don't think so much that, you know, because I'm only practicing five minutes, I'm not going to progress. It's really if you add up all those really quality five-minute practice times, you're going to really progress. So it's actually opposite than you what, what you might be thinking. So my recommendation for you guys this week is just to set yourself a small goal, um, something that you think is attainable, um, and try to achieve that. And you'll find that you'll start to get into more of a routine if it's a lot less of an overall time compared to, um, really trying to practice an hour all the time. That can be challenging. Okay, so hopefully that, that's some good encouragement for you guys. And, um, you know, we're going to be moving on to a new assignment today, uh, Lesson 13 out of the Violin Tutor Pro Series 2 book. You can get this right on the website by uh, clicking and submitting your email address. So uh, this is actually song number seven in the book. Uh, it's called The Slow Bow Melody. And the new thing that we're going to be learning today is uh, the whole note. So um, my guess is probably a lot of you guys have seen whole notes, whether it be maybe in another musical instrument you guys have played or even on the violin. If you are been playing a year, I would hope at some point you would have seen a whole note. Raise your hand if you guys are in the boat of knowing what a whole note is. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and circle what, what it is, just for those of you guys that are not sure. So what I'm circling right now is a whole note. So it doesn't have a stem on it. It's just a dot, a white dot, basically. And whenever you come up to those notes, you basically just 
hold the note for four counts. So if a quarter note is getting one count, which it should, let's assume a quarter note is about the same length of time as a second on a clock. So one, 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 approximately one, right? Um, a whole note's going to be four of those. It's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So they're quite long. What most students do when they start playing the whole notes, they tend to rush them because it's easy to kind of try to cut it short because it's a little bit uncomfortable uh, to maybe hold a note for four beats, especially if you don't have a good bow hold. So try to make sure that when you guys are playing long notes, getting that slow violin sound, that you're holding the bow properly. It's very important. Keeping the grip relaxed, fingers curved, thumb curved, as that really helps to sustain the bow. One thing that we can actually try to do that would be good practice, uh, if you guys want to go ahead and grab your instruments, I want you guys to hold the note on the violin as long as you can, from the very bottom where you're holding the bow to the very tip, while still getting a clean sound. Um, I won't exaggerate. I can actually do it for about 20, 25 seconds. I can hold the bow because I have no tension in my right hand. I'm not gripping the bow too hard. It's it's all just guided by the front of my finger, the index. So I can sustain a note for a very long period of time and still get a clear sound. I'm guessing you guys can't do 20 to 25 seconds, but if you guys can do, say, 5 to 10 seconds, that would be pretty good. So I'll just do 5 to 10 seconds so you guys can see what we're going for. Those of you guys that are here right now can see me. Um, I encourage you guys to hopefully attend the live webinars. So this is what I'm going to try to do. Try to hold the note as long as I can. I'm just going to pick uh, the D. Open D. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I just did it for eight seconds. So that'd be a really good way to warm up and make sure that you guys are extending the arm properly, not using the shoulder. Make sure you're bending the wrist coming back. So if you're not doing that, if you keep a stiff wrist and if your fingers are stiff, your hand isn't relaxed, you're going to find it diff uh, a difficult time sustaining a note. And what I tell students is actually it's harder to play slow and harder to sustain sometimes than it is to play fast. So a lot of people think that, you know, the ultimate violinist is somebody that can just play really fast, which certainly it's difficult to play fast, but it's just as difficult to play very slow and very pure and controlled. So that would be a good, good thing to practice this week. Raise your hand if you guys have not done that before, if you guys have not practiced bow sustainment. I'm guessing probably a few of you guys have not. It's definitely a different kind of method to practice. Yep, looks like about half of you. So good. So make sure you guys work on that as sustaining the bow is a really important part to get a pure sound when you start to play even faster stuff. Okay, so number seven, we have that whole note at the very end of the, of the piece. We're in the key of D. You guys can follow the notation above. So I'm going to play through number seven. Ready, go. Okay, and one thing that I find a lot of students, when they start to do different rhythms on the violin, they tend to not do the rhythm exact. So one tool, uh, raise your hand if you guys have heard of a metronome. I'm guessing most of you guys have. Good. Uh, so a metronome is basically a tool that keeps exact time for you at different speeds. Uh, think of it as like a second hand on a clock is moving at a certain speed. A metronome is basically going to click at a certain speed, either faster or slower than a second hand. And it's going to allow you to really keep good timing when you're playing different rhythms on the violin. It's one thing to know what a whole note is supposed to do, four beats. It's another thing to hold it exactly, exactly four beats. So basically, if I uh, do some circling here, these four notes right here are four beats. These two half notes are four beats. These are four beats. And then the last, the last whole note is four beats. The key to really playing in rhythm and getting a really good rhythmic sound is to make sure that all of these are exactly the same amount of time. But what some students do is they maybe play this first section 
has a certain speed, say it's one, two, three, four, which is good. But then in the second part, they'll, they'll rush. They'll, instead of going one, two, they'll go one, two, one, two. So they won't be exactly counting. So one, one way to, to also achieve this on, um, on top of using your metronome is to tap your foot. So as I'm playing this, I'll actually clap, and um, you guys can kind of follow along. My foot is also tapping to the beat to the speed that I'm going. So it's going to be one, two, three. My foot's tapping. One, two. My foot's tapping. One, two. One, 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 one. One, two, three, four. Now, if you did that properly, your foot should have been tapping at the same speed for the whole entire line. And that applies to any song. You should always be the foot should always be tapping the same speed. So what you might want to do if, if you're if you're the type that can't really tap their head and rub their stomach at the same time, <laughs> the people that aren't as coordinated, I highly recommend using a metronome and really trying to match up the foot to the actual clicks on the metronome. So if you're able to do that, then you know you're on the right track to playing in timing. The second most important thing to really getting a song to sound really good is to, to master the rhythm. So I think I would say probably 80 percent of people think they have better rhythm than they really do. <laughs> um, just I'm giving you that statistic from private lessons, like eight out of 10 students that I would have would would be kind of in that boat of, yeah, I have the rhythm down really well. But then I would hear him play the song or I'd hear him tap their foot and eight out of 10 of times they wouldn't have it as good as what I would want them to have it. <laughs> so so even if you understand it, try to work on it because it's something that takes practice and understanding. Raise your hand if that makes sense about rhythm. It's important. All right. All right, let's go on to number eight. So this one we're going to be tapping our foot and making sure we don't rush. So let's establish the quarter note before we start. So you could be, you know, establishing your metronome before you start. Let's go about one, two, ready, go. in my head as I was doing that was uh, something re related to um, following along. I find a lot of students, uh, they tend to, you know, always find the solution to rhythm uh, to following somebody else or maybe listening to the song first and kind of hearing how it's supposed to sound. Try not to get into that trap. I see a lot of students that do that. They eventually, they just can't play a song on their own by following the music. And that's something you don't want to develop. You want to really have a solid sense of tempo and rhythm when you're playing. Um, one example that I see this happen is if a student plays an orchestra, so they're always hearing what it's supposed to sound like. They're following other people in front of them or behind them or whatever. So it's a lot easier to avoid practicing rhythm when you're in an orchestra or when you're always playing in a group or if you know the way the song's supposed to sound. But one tool that is extremely helpful and it's, um, you know, I really try to train to my private student students is understanding how to count without knowing the song and without having somebody to follow. So that's definitely something that um, you actually consider if you've not worked on the metronome and actually really working on a, a certain song that, you know, you might not exactly have the rhythm down. It's a really good idea. All right, let's go on to number nine. I'm going to scroll down here. This next one is called Mary Jane. All right, so here's the quarter note established. One, two, ready, go. Two, three, four. Two, three, four.
just like that. A couple things to make sure you guys are doing in this piece. There's some fourth fingers. A lot of students like to avoid using fours, but uh, basically by using a four here, it's keeping us on the same string as well as right here. So make sure you guys are practicing that fourth finger and um, you might be a little bit flat with that note just because it's uh, a little harder to reach. So make sure you're working on that. Also, we see something here that we've seen in the book, but maybe some of you guys that haven't seen the previous uh, webinars. So that little apostrophe sign indicates a bow lift. So that means that at this point, your bow is at the tip, at the very end of the bow. And instead of continuing the next note going from the tip to the frog, we want to do a bow lift, which would set us up to be in the down bow in the next measure. So try to um, do a bow lift there. That's a good practice. And you won't actually see that in all music. Uh, it's, it's probably 50-50, but just the down bow in the next measure is what you'll see, and that's called an assumed bow lift because you want to be doing that bowing properly. Great. Raise your hand if that makes sense about the bowing. All right. Okay, and then we actually, yeah, we actually have lesson 14. I think we'll go ahead and do that as well today um, because it's kind of related as far as it's some long notes. So we just learned whole notes, and that was four beats. But now when we see a dot after a half note, it indicates three counts. So let me just make sure you guys understand this. So if you have a a dot after a half note, it's three counts, three metronome clicks. If you don't have any stem and it's white, it's four. A lot of times when you have the dotted half note, we call it, we're going to see a time signature of three, four. That means that there's basically there's three beats per measure. And if you see a time signature of four, four, that indicates that there's four beats a measure, and that's going to have more of the whole notes. You can't. You actually would never see a whole note in three, four time. You'd only see it in four, four time. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and play through number 10. So let's establish the quarter note. One, two, go. <laughs> Like that. I would say it'd be very easy to rush going through, you know, this area in here, especially if you don't have a metronome. So I highly recommend using a metronome to make sure you guys are counting each of those three counts. So yeah, this is not so much practice of hard left hand, hard notes. It's more practice of bow sustainment and making sure that you're counting properly. So again, even if you think you might be getting it, you might not be. So try to use a metronome to make sure. Okay, so that's uh, number 10. Let's do one more for this week. We're going to go down to number 11. This one's going to be a little bit trickier. It's going to have some uh, dotted half notes as well as some eighth notes. All right, number 11. One, ready, go. A few things about this one. So if you're playing the quarter note measure right here properly, one, 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 there's a really good chance that this next part you're not going to play fast enough. 
for every one quarter note, there should be two eighth notes. So if you're tapping your foot to the quarter note, for every tap, there should be two notes played. Or if you're listening to the metronome, for every click, there should be two notes. So if I'm counting at the second line, I'm going to count it like this. One, two, three. One, one, one. One and two and three and one, like that. So I would say that's a really easy spot to not play fast enough as it's easy to um, do those too slow compared to the quarter note. One other thing I noticed is in measure three, one thing you guys can do and take some practice is actually holding your finger down for that whole measure. So you can actually hold your one down on D and G uh, without actually having to move it. And this is actually kind of a, a preparatory concept for double stops. Uh, double stops is basically when you uh, play two notes at the same time on the violin. And to do that, to achieve that, you have to be able to hold fingers down in between strings without actually moving them. So this, that's kind of a preparatory concept if you guys are interested in learning double stops eventually. Um, you should be able to hold your finger down on D and G, the first finger, and not move it to play the third measure. So this. And for those of you guys that are um, here in the live class, I'll just kind of show you closely what it should look like. But basically it's, it's a concept of having a fat finger, I call it, which is basically where I'm taking my finger and I'm putting it as much over both strings as possible. And the worst thing you can do, what you don't want to do is, is split the string. So you don't want the string to split away from each other. You want to keep them together and almost move them together to get to achieve proper contact with your first finger on both strings. So practice doing that. And you can actually even do that with plucking. So put your finger on both strings, uh, press down. You should get a ring sound for each of the notes like this. But now if you didn't have proper contact, it would sound dead. So you're going for, and that will help you achieve eventually the double stop. Like that. But that's a good spot to practice that. See how my first finger is going down? It's not going to move. Like that. Uh, raise your hand if that makes sense. Good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have you guys work on that for next week. Um, glad to see you all again. I was on vacation this past week. We had a great time. I was uh, in Disney World and um, played some golf and hung out with my wife. Had a good time. We don't take many vacations, so it was nice to get away. But now I'm back at it again and looking forward to helping you guys out. So um, please post in the forums. Please uh, just interact with with the site. We haven't got a ton of questions lately in the forum, so feel free to post some questions there. Um, also, uh, check out some of my new classes I'll be posting soon. Um, we're going to be doing some new stuff. So, but yeah, uh, glad you guys all came today, and I'm going to just answer maybe a few of your individual questions now. Um, but for those of you guys that are, watch or are listening on audio, uh, have a great day.